What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic and we're back with a cool concept that I actually didn't even come up with. I was watching one of Lord Payne's videos and he came up with a concept relatively recently which you'll probably see on the top of the workshop and he came up with a concept for adjustable suspension. Now if you take a normal suspension block in Scrap Mechanic and we can just spawn it here, uh, they do have adjustable points. So for example if we put some weight on this, uh, okay we need more weight, how much weight do we need? There we go. You see we can adjust it and of course uh, that, that bottoms it out. But if we adjust it to three and then four and then so on. And so we can sort of adjust the amount of force it has. But you can't do this while you're moving your vehicle. He came up with this really ingenious way to actually use multiple suspension pieces to sort of create an adjustable stiffness on your suspension as you drive. And that's basically what this mechanism is here. So we've got two suspension pieces. Uh, they're both set to three. You can change them. It really doesn't matter. But this gives us some default stiffness. And this is just sort of attached on a free-floating bearing. And uh, we've got a small wheel here just so we can see the demo. But really, these two pieces are welded together. They're both attached. And this larger piece of suspension here is attached on a piston. And what this allows you to do is sort of kind of create a pre-compression. So right now, the weight of the block is pushing each of these suspension pieces down and they're both being compressed. But when we pre-compress this outside one by extending this piston by one block, it actually, you see there, it lifts up the whole creation. Now, it hasn't bottomed out the suspension. There's still an absorption effect that's going to happen there. They still have space to move. But because of the pre-compression, you're actually creating an initial sort of stiffness in the suspension. And that's how he did it on his demo. And I thought, man, this is such a sweet concept because now you can make vehicles that actually don't have hydraulics, but they have an adjustable suspension. You're not really changing where the axle is. You're just changing the amount of force the suspension has. And it's now trying to push it up, but it still won't extend past the max point. So here, here's the example. If we lift it up, you can see there the max point is this length of two. And if we pre-compress it, it doesn't go past that max point. So we're not lifting the ride up at all. You're just giving the suspension more strength. And so I said, well, this is an awesome idea. This is really kind of cool. And so I decided to try and make my own. But instead of using a piston, uh, a piston, if you only really have two points. You have the on or off, really. So it's, it's a stiffer version and a thinner version. But if we use an old school bearing setup with two controllers that are looped, we could actually create one that's variable. And so you see, we can actually just have this sort of controller setup, adjust the piston to any specific length. And this one will actually go between zero and two blocks extension, which gives you a fully bottomed out point, which is basically completely rigid suspension. But you can see, even if we fully bottom out, again, lifting this up, it still doesn't extend past that second point. So again, you're not lifting your ride up. This would just be completely stiff and the entire vehicle wouldn't move. It would drive as if there was no suspension on it. If we drop this, there's, there's gonna be no suspension effect. It's just, it's rigid, right? But if we lower it a little bit, you know, we can lower it even just the slightest little bit. Let's say, you know, that kind of compression. So now our suspension effect, we have a little bit of it, but it's a lot more rigid and a lot stiffer than if we had this fully extended. So I thought, you know, this is really, really cool. We have to take this and we have to put it on a completely ridiculous double wishbone setup. And so I was working on a prototype. Now this is just sort of the prototype version. I, I made a better version over there. And really same thing, same mechanism, but you see we can adjust both of those back suspension pieces and it has the exact same effect on the double wishbone. And so now we've locked it into a position where it only has that small amount of flex if we lift it up and we drop it, you can see it has that amount of flex. But if we lift it up and we go to full extension, something like that, then we can close this. And you can see it acts as if there's literally no suspension on the vehicle. So this kind of has, you know, a lot of different, I don't know, cool things you can do with it, I guess. So of course I decided to take that and put it on a really simple truck. Uh, not too fancy of a truck. I just kind of made a really simple truck body. You know, it's just the standard con metal cube got some wheel cutouts but up inside here we've got these suspension setups and they're linked in a little bit differently they're slightly different from that one but basically the same thing a double wishbone and wired up and it is set up into four different buttons so we've got front up front down and back up back down so it's not left to right you could 
put each set of wheels on its own controller, uh, but I decided to do just the front two together and the back two together so you can change the suspension stiffness between the two points. And then of course we made it look like a little bit of a truck. And in the back there you see we've got those two white macaroni noodle type things and those are actually your sort of gauges if you want to see how stiff the front and the back is. You can also see how much each of the wheels is kind of compressed, you can just look at the suspension. Uh, a little bit laggy when you get close to other vehicles for obvious reasons with the amount of bearings it has. But you can see we're just sort of bouncing around and we've got a, you know, a lot of, I don't know, sort of suspension flex, I guess. We can land here and it'll just absorb it. But if you want to, for example, stiffen up the back, we can hold three, I believe. And we can see that meter on the right side there moving to indicate the back is getting uh, stiffer. And once it gets to full extension, we'll have a completely rigid but you can see if we even stop you can tell the difference how the front still has a lot more flex than the rear and again you're not changing the bottom point of the suspension you're just giving it sort of less give so the front is almost completely compressed at no adjustment point and I, I did that on purpose so you can go from like that full flex to a no flex state and then of course we can jack up the front as well and it will seem like you're jacking up the entire car but in reality you're actually just adjusting the suspension points so it's really kind of awesome and then uh, you know we can just keep driving and now it's a, a more rigid setup and so the suspension is still a little bit acting there but you can see it has a much less tolerance a much slower uh, point and it actually acts a lot tougher so just a really really cool idea again I can't take any sort of credit for this idea Lord Payne such an original guy coming out with great ideas like this I mean I never would have thought of putting two suspension pieces together and relying on the one compressing the other to sort of get this I have no idea where he comes up with these ideas and uh, kudos to him if you guys don't know who Lord Payne is I'll put a link to his channel in the description down below but I really do encourage you to check him out really really cool guy makes a lot of mods uh, if you do have scrap mechanic you've probably seen some of his mods in the workshop and uh, comes up with some crazy ideas like this so just really awesome stuff and of course then you know I, I just wanted to make a vehicle with it but it really it's really a lot of fun to drive with this kind of a setup because you can just adjust the suspension for however you want uh, I haven't really tested on roads versus off-road but when you have a stiffer suspension and you accelerate the back doesn't sort of lift up as much you can see here when we accelerate here the back really pushes back quickly but if we lower the back all the way now they are a little slow they move in five degree increments on the controller so it you know it takes a little bit but it gives you a lot of different set points so let's just lower the back all the way you'll notice too there are sensors there in the back and those sensors are actually hooked up into logic gates so even if you hold the button for as long as possible you'll never go past the end points you'll never go too far in one direction or too far in the other and, and cause an issue. Those meters don't just show you where your suspension's at, but they also sort of give you the uh, the adjustment to make sure that you don't accidentally go too far. And so you can see it's super, super um, soft now, suspension. And with the super soft suspension, you can see when we accelerate just how much it flexes towards the back. And, uh, you know, if we want to eliminate that, again, we can just stiffen up the back end. I really want to remake this design though. The one thing I notice if you if you look at the sides of this design, the controller bar, because it uses that double bearing mechanism, it really sticks out and even when you have it up top, it still sticks down. And I was trying to hide them just to fit room for the cockpit and the truck features itself. When I had them like up, it was really kind of weird. But you can see the, the frame sort of adjusts. Now it doesn't really matter because it'll never actually hit those points. You're creating a limit. But, you know, I, I would like to make another version of this that hides that. With the back suspension a lot stiffer, it actually drives a lot smoother. And I really enjoy the ability to customize it. Obviously, having that many customization features is kind of pointless. And I do agree with Lord Payne that having a single piston just between two different kind of, you know, hard and soft points makes the most sense because, uh... You know, having all these adjustments points, you don't really notice the difference between the two of them. Like, most of the time I find myself going all the way to the one end or all the way to the other. But it is still kind of cool to have, and uh, on the double wishbone setup, it's kind of awesome. You know, not really practical, but it's neat that it works. Alright, here we go. We're gonna, we're gonna go up this hill. And I think to do this, all we need to do is just uh, go... Okay, no, we're gonna we're gonna go super rigid on the back here. No, super rigid, rigid. Okay, here we go. And uh, really soft suspension on the front. This should work. And then I think we're gonna just you know power up over this hill. Oh yeah. See, look at that. Keeping the uh, back wheels in contact with the. Oh no 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 no. All right, line this up. Line this up line this 
There we go. Look at look at what you can do with more power. I mean, the other problem too with the double wishbone is obviously we are creating suspension glitches. You can see there uh, the truck doesn't like coming down properly like with gravity. So there is a sort of inherent suspension glitch effect which does kind of make it drive a little bit more stable. It'll it'll stay on the ground more, but it also, you know, allows you to do stuff like this and uh, it floats through the air really, really nicely. But I will upload the truck to the workshop. Of course, check out Lord Payne's channel as well and check out uh, his vehicle. I believe his was top of the workshop when I was making this video. So make sure you check it out. It is a very, very cool idea and just something that's so original and so neat. And it's, it's really what I love about the idea is just how simple it is, yet how it's so noticeable and, uh, and really so efficient and just makes a much better driving experience in scrap mechanics. So make sure you guys, if you do like this video, hit that like button down below, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next time.